ericmother.com as we approach the end of trading for March 29th, 2000. So there is the close. Let's see how the numbers settle out here. And then I will continue on with this long weekend's market analysis video. So let's wait for the numbers to close and settle out. And then I'll be back here in a couple of minutes and I'll continue on with this video. And so we can see the close of the week. This is how market a nice rebound of the lows of the week market closing. Let's call it about more than 1% at the end of the week and a little bit off the lows. Let's take a look at those charts. And of course, the first thing I want to do is this recent bounce coming off the lows around here. Just want to show you where this came from. If you are paying attention, it became a little bit more evident that there was something the market was trying to do, which is come off the lows because we attacked fresh lows here. And while we did that, we had an improvement of the RSI level. So that was positive divergence indicated or what which indicated that the market was due for some type of a bounce. And we can also see this if we take a look at the MACD. So while the market was making those lows, the MACD was improving. So there was your positive divergence. Now this is the NASDAQ hourly. I'll come back to the NASDAQ hourly in a little bit. Let's take a look at the 30 minute chart for the NASDAQ. And what we had seen is as the market pressed fresh lows here, we saw that the market improved and then it made, so it, it made a fresh low here. There was an initial improvement, but then again, it tried to move lower a second time here. And we saw a good improvement of the RSI. So again, on the 30 minute chart, we saw positive divergence. So this bounce off the lows of Wednesday, off the lows here, this was telegraphed by this positive divergence that we saw on the hourly and on the 30 minute chart for the major averages. And also we can see here that as far as the MACD is concerned is as the market was pressing these lows here, the MACD did improve. So the MACD also gave us another confirmation of a potential bounce by giving us positive divergence, which is this period here. All right, so the bounce did make sense. So we go back to the NASDAQ weekly. And remember, we've been talking about this understanding that the market is coming back to test the RSI 50 level on the weekly. And this is a big deal. And of course, if you are not new to this, this is kind of like boring. But if you are new to this, you can see that when the market has found support with uniform activity around the RSI 50, we tend to test the highs, if not break out. And here we had uniform activity support around the RSI 50. And again, we tested the highs and actually broke out. We did the same thing here, uniform activity support, which meant that we were going to test the highs and potentially break out. And again here. And we did test the highs at the very least. In fact, we did break out, but that rolled over. Point of it is we tested the highs. So we know from our understanding of the RSI that if this holds the RSI 50 level, irrespective of anybody's opinion, what that is telling us is that we should expect there to be a test of the highs and potentially even a breakout. And I know sometimes even I cannot believe that sometimes, but the market tends to do that all too frequently. Now, at the same time, so in other words, once the NASDAQ moved back above RSI 50, it was evidence that the market was going to hold. And so the movement since the lows of the week are consistent with the NASDAQ holding the RSI 50. Now, what really could get interesting and might get interesting is at the same time, we should remain vigilant because a break below 50 would actually in itself be a major trend line break. So we have to watch out for potential drop below RSI 50. Otherwise, as of right now, 
the Nasdaq is doing exactly what the bulls want to see, which is holding the RSI 50. And of course, this is on the weekly chart. Now we can also see from the Dow, again, Dow has been holding the RSI 50 for bounces that took it back to test the highs. And of course, this is no surprise because this is something we understand or at least something that I try and help people understand because this is my own personal research based on my own research. And again, here we held the RSI 50. The key is the uniform activity. Once you see that, the market is telling you it's going to test the highs, if not break out. And so depending on whether or not we move up back above RSI 50, now keep in mind the Dow closed just below RSI 50, which means that there is a possibility that should it move above RSI 50, we can expect a nice continuation of this rally. And failure to move back above, let's say we begin the week and the Dow is unable to recapture the RSI 50 level. That might be actually a signal unto itself that the market has failed to hold support. It's another way of saying, put another way. So another way of explaining this is to just draw, draw a simple line here. So we know that as long as this line holds, then indication here is that the market wants to move higher. And at the same time, failure to hold that line and a break below that line indicates that we failed to hold support and we should expect this market to crater to the downside. So right now, that is all in play. S&P 500 can also be viewed in the same way. And here's the S&P 500 now closing just below 50. Of course, if we move above 50, we can expect this to lead to a big recovery or a continuation of the recovery. And at the same time, a break of that support failure to hold back above RSI 50 would suggest to us that the market is not as strong even after one week of recovery. But so far, we can say, we can argue, and it's a good argument that the bulls are doing exactly what they need to do to hold the market together. We can even draw a line like that. We can see that this was support. The market has come back to test the same line and it is bouncing on this line. So we can see that the bulls are doing exactly what they need to do to hold the market and give it a reason to bounce. And also at some point, should we break below that, then of course we can get aggressive again being short. Now if we take a look at the S&P 500, this is a one year daily chart. We can see some good action in the sense that from a day to day closing, we had a fresh daily closing low here, short term, but this came with an improvement of the RSI as you can see. We also see that the RSI held above 30.9. So which might start explaining why we are seeing this bounce because of that positive divergence. And also this positive divergence can be seen on the MACD. And here we can see a test of the daily closing low. So the daily closing low is right there. And while all that is taking place, you see that the MACD here is improving. So that is definitely positive divergence. So the daily looks good as far as S&P 500 is concerned. And of course, of course, it is holding the 200 day moving average. So all those things do point to a market that is stabilizing. Now, there's also something else that we can use here in terms of visual understanding. And we have to go back to the lows of February 2016. And I've talked about this previously where we can see that this is where the market did come off the lows and of course since then markets been higher in fact substantially higher so we can use this rsi movement of the lows there to understand and to capture lows down the road so anytime we have uniformity or uniform activity bounce on this line it should give us a swing trade to the upside as per my theory and uniformity method 
So a bounce there, good re-entry. Double bottom support with uniform activity, swing trade opportunity. Uniform activity below the line, back above it, another swing trade opportunity. You bounce on the line, you actually kiss it, Mwah! you get a nice low right here, another swing trade opportunity. Again, double bottom, you get a, an opportunity there. By the way, you came close here, you held, which is those lows. Double bottom support below the line, back above it, for those lows, you get a swing trade opportunity. And here the same thing, this is double bottom. I don't know that you can see that, but this is once below the line, back above it, and then this week we held on that line. So as long as the S&P 500 is holding above the blue line, what that tells us is that we can anticipate this market to continue building to the upside as long as this line is holding. Now if we take a look at the monthly chart, let's not forget that we continue holding above the RSI 50. The RSI 69.1 is what I should say. So we continue holding above RSI 69.1 on the monthly for the NASDAQ. And visually, of course, I always show this because it's easy to understand. Just like the NASDAQ would be in a bullish mode while the RSI was above 69.1. And this was two years worth of data from here all the way to there. Two years. And that is because the RSI held above 69.1. So I've been saying that as long as the NASDAQ is holding above 69.1, what that means is that yes, they're going to be pullbacks, they're going to be shallow and short-lived. Ultimately, the market still is bullish as long as we continue holding above this. So the NASDAQ continues to be stable even as of right now. Now, Let's not trivialize the fact that the Dow was trading below 69.1 for most of this month. In fact, right now, it might have an opportunity depending on what happens. So, the Dow is getting closer to reclaiming the 69.1 level. If it can move above 69.1, of course, that is indication of strength and possibility of moving higher. If it is unable to hold above the 69.1 level, then that means that it still has potential to continue low. So this is where the battlefield is being held. Take a look at the S&P 500. It has already dropped below 69.1 and continues to hold below that. So S&P 500, as long as it is below 69.1, we can still expect there to be pressure to the downside. We have to be very sensitive to the idea that should it continue rebounding and moving higher, if it can reclaim this level, above that level, then the market is truly poised to move higher. So, so far we've been talking about the market being strong and reasons why the market could bounce. Now, if we take a look at the smaller time frame charts, which I said I'll come back to, And this being the NASDAQ hourly chart. So we had talked about this positive divergence, which was good enough to bring the market off the lows. Now, at the same time, you notice the market pulled back towards the end of Friday's session, or Thursday's session, which is the last trading day of the, of the month, actually. But what happened is we had come back to test this break. So this was the break that gave us this pullback. And so if you take that line and use my uniformity method, you see that this is where the market stalled as of late in the session. Resistance gave us those intraday highs and a pullback. Resistance here gave us those intraday highs and a pullback. Resistance here was the reason why we came off the highs as of the last hour. So until the market can clear this line, there's no need to be bullish again. So the market might have to prove itself first and foremost by moving above this line before one can consider any upside. It's another way of saying that until the market can 
clear the top side resistance line here until the market can clear this line we can assume that the market continues to be sh on a short term basis pointing down so if you do not capture the laws here there's no point to chase the market until it moves above this line for starters and until it moves above this hourly resistance line and of course if we take a look at the 30 minute chart for the Nasdaq we can see the same resistance line on the hourly continues to press the market lower and also based on the RSI work we can see that this was the recent break and the break was off those highs there and if we draw a line from here should be something like that we can see the market hit the same level double top resistance happens to be also around the RSI 50 and again we hit this as of late Thursday end of the week and the market did pull back so again even on the uh, on the 30 minute chart for the Nasdaq if the Nasdaq is to move higher the first order of business is wait for it to clear this line before you can add to your long position if you go have long positions wait for it to clear this line if you want to go and be bullish so without the market moving above either of the lines so again without the market moving above this line here on the hourly or until the market moves above this line we can anticipate that market is still gonna be pressed down in other words we might begin the new week the new month with a possibility of moving lower we shall see unless the market can jump above these two resistance lines in price and RSI so in conclusion as we begin the new month let's be aware that if the Nasdaq is positive in other words if the Nasdaq starts pointing higher on its RSI and especially more importantly the biggest buy signal in my opinion would be if and when the Nasdaq moves above 7411.48 which goes back to this monthly closing high so at some point in the future should the Nasdaq hold above RSI 69.1 should the Nasdaq break out that's gonna be a very very powerful buy signal it will be similar to say let's say this period here when we broke out we started a nice move to the upside or similar to a period like here after we had one month of rest the Nasdaq broke out and continued higher so either of these two breakouts might be bullish or a sign of what could happen if the market was to break out so that's the bullish argument a future breakout above this level would be a good buy signal now we can also turn this and use this and say but wait the Nasdaq failed to hold its breakout level which is true we had spent some time above the buy point and again that number is seven 411.48 we, we had been breaking out but by the end of the month of course we had stalled so right now this is a failed breakout which is not good also in the new month if the Nasdaq was to drop below RSI 69.1 that's also going to be a bearish signal so we need to watch out for that now as far as the Dow and S&P 500 are concerned because they ended the month of March below 69.1 now they have an opportunity of moving back above 69.1 and that would actually be in itself a strong indication of upside potential if the Dow and the S&P 500 can move above 69.1 either of them moving above 69.1 is a big deal 
And the best way I can show that is let's take a look at previously what would happen when markets moved back above 69.1. And so we can see here as an example S&P 500. And this is a six year monthly chart. We can see here we recaptured the level back above 69.1. And that is this period here. Once we moved back above 69.1, we had a chance of improving, breaking out, and continuing higher. So if the S&P 500 can move back above 69.1, that's actually going to be very bullish. And if we take a look at the S&P 500, five-minute chart, just to explain why we came off the highs, we can see that if we draw a line from the break here, and again, I'm going to provide a link in the description of the video because this is a method that I have researched. I call it the uniformity method. And every anytime you bounce or find resistance on this line, that should give you a reason to expect a pullback. We've been bouncing on this. No, we've been hitting this line and pulling back. So for those of you who like to trade short-term charts, this has been a good tell of what to expect in the market. And again, here as of late Thursday, end of the month, end of the week. So anyway, so that concludes the free portion of this video. The rest of the video is for paid moather.com subscribers. So you can find more information if you are interested and for paid subscribers let's continue on for the rest of you guys enjoy the rest of your long weekend i'll see you in the next edition